Welcome back to another daily recap for Friday, September 27. It's 8.25 a.m. And like yesterday, the levels that I have identified are a little bit conservative. There were other levels in between here, different areas that I have chosen not to include just to be on the safe side. Uh, but if they fall or grind higher, I don't want them to um, you know, miss levels essentially or go through levels and not react. And that tends to be an issue when there are multiple levels. And there were good levels. To be safe, I'm just going to include these. There's a zone at the top, kind of a large zone, but this 578 you may have noticed has been there all week, and it has not been hit yet, And but it's still important. And then there's a level from today on a shorter time frame, and along with a level from today, that creates a zone. So we'll come back to this chart after the market closes to analyze any trades taken at these levels in the E-minis, and we will catch you on the other side. And we're back, coming at you the next day. This is Saturday morning. You can see that none of the levels from Friday were hit, therefore no trades were taken. It came close to both of these two levels, but there were too many front runners jumping the gun and making price react ahead of the levels. Even if you had the five cent buffer applied, which we can do now, it still wasn't enough. As you might assume, there is no recording of the live trades to watch because I did not enter any trades. In fact, I was away from my screens for most of the day taking care of storm-related issues. Actually, we're still here running off of generator power until they restore power to my area. Speaking of that, I hope everyone out there is doing okay in the aftermath of Helene. I think I consider myself lucky because other than the power loss, I have no damage or downed trees on my property. A ton of my neighbors do. They have a lot more to deal with. Trees are down everywhere. I'm in, I'm in upstate South Carolina, if anyone is wondering. So stay safe out there. I did say yesterday morning in the pre-video that I purposely excluded some levels just to be safe in case something sparked the market and they moved a lot. So you may be wondering if any of those missing levels would have worked for a trade today. The short answer is no. The only one that may have come close was the gap or the close from Thursday. It was just the gap and nothing more. I found no other confirmations in that area that would have helped validate its importance. But if you want to look at what would have happened if you took a long position as they were coming down into this area. So the close of Thursday was around 572.30. I believe that was the exact official close. So if I had a you know 572.25 or something like that, the close on this one minute chart on Thursday was 572.25. So if you took a trade at 572.30, that was your trigger. And you can see, first of all, that the market thought that this area was important, but they didn't really come into the level the way I like to see price approach these levels. It's better if they come in faster and with increasing volume. This was more of a gradual kind of meandering down toward the level. And when they got there, they came up two cents short, I believe, before bouncing, uh, almost enough for a base hit. So would you have considered that the trade and then canceled the order activation with the assumption they were going to go lower? Hard to say. According to my rules, that would have qualified as a near miss, but the decision to go ahead and take the trade the next time they got to the exact level, which would have been here when I fell through it, uh, would have been predicated on what was going on on other charts and indicators, and I really wasn't there observing all this time. If you held on, it looks like you would have barely had a base hit. They came up a high of here of 572.71, which is a penny or so above, and the E-minis could have been a little different. So I don't know. I wasn't there observing at this time. If you held on, it looks like they may have given you something. But in my opinion, it was just better not to have this level as a contender on the board for Friday. I think that was the right decision. Before we go to the tracking log, let's jump to some longer time frames to see where we're at now. On the daily chart of the SPY, they're still doing this kind of back and forth thing we talked about. And it's on low volume or lower than the average. So it seems there's still no conviction in the market in either direction so far. Remember this trend line on the weekly chart? Well, they closed above it yesterday. So that's a little bullish on its face. So look at it this way. The genesis of this trend line started way back at the end of 2021. So almost three years ago. In, this, in July of this year, they found resistance in this area and pulled way back quite a bit. And by the end of August, they were back up in this area, came up short of the trend line, were pushed back down, kind of did a little reset. And now they're at the trend line again end of September, and they got their first weekly close above it. There have been several daily closes above this area too when we look at the same trend line plotted on the daily chart. So what does this mean? Like I said, it appears to be bullish on its face, but all this is happening on low volume. So I don't see a lot of professional activity 
if we get a spark, some type of black swan event or whatever, they could move in either direction in a bigger than usual way. That's kind of how I'm looking at this now. The IWM is still trying to make this trend change signal play out to the downside, but they're not doing it cleanly. Obviously, they're in a different place than the SPY is currently, but the IWM will sometimes lead the SPY. So I think it's a good idea to keep an eye on what the IWM is doing. It could take a while, but eventually everything will be trending in either a bull or a bear market. It's like we've been on the edge of something for the past, say, week or two. On to the tracking logs. No levels hit, no trades taken. This is the play in by the rules log. This is my trades, so they're the same for today. Pretty simple. But since it's the end of a week and essentially the end of the month of September, let's filter out some shorter time periods to see how we've been doing. Here is the play in by the rules log year to date. All of 2024, January through today or Friday. And then here are my trades right here, Sam's trades. So you can kind of compare the difference. It's been a pretty good run. Again, play in by the rules. Take a look at the averages, the totals, percentages, and my trades for what it's worth. And here's the month of September. We have one more day. That's Monday. It will be the 30th, but played by the rules. You see the averages, totals. Uh, under average for the longer term wasn't great, but I actually had some good trades. So here are my averages for the month of September. Pretty good month. Now we're back to the rolling one week here, Friday to Friday, for both of the logs, just so I have room for my subscribe button and the uh, recommended next video. But that wraps up today's video. Thanks for watching. I know there wasn't anything exciting in terms of trades since none of the levels were hit on Friday, but I hope you learned something and found some value in what we went over. If you did, I would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button so I'll know. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next recap video on Monday. Have a great rest of your day.